James the intern. James the intern. James the intern. Hey guys, it's me, James the intern, here with Erin Lavinay of The Rint off Broadway. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm amazing. I feel amazing. It's a beautiful day. It's a gorgeous day. Like 60, 60 degrees, 65 degrees. Like it's amazing. Off the off Broadway. Off the off Broadway. <laughs> Broadway. The amazing New World Stadium. Yes, here we are at the New World Plaza. Having a lovely day. It's like 65 degrees. It's beautiful. Free it's so nice. Yeah, it's amazing. For March. March. There's no winter. No winter. No winter. Well, we just decided not to happen. And how long have you been doing uh, Rent at New World Stadium? Uh, I've been a part of this production since November. So, three months ish at this point. And going strong. But you were no stranger to the rain. You guys might have recognized him from the national tour. Yeah, did the tour in uh, 2006 and 2007, and came back and did a little bit on 2008. And uh, now it's full circle. Back. It's been the big apple now. What's like the biggest difference do you think of like taking it from the tour, which is the old Broadway like set version, to the new improved mega version that is the new off Broadway version? I did, and I wasn't a part of it since the beginning, so I guess this is technically the revival. Um, but it's a lot of the same creative team, Michael Bride, Tim Wilde, I knew Tim, and the development tour. And, uh, yeah, so basically they took, it seems to me like they took everything that, that was good and great and heartfelt and what Jonathan wanted from the original show, and kept it here, and gave it some new blocking, and some new fresh faces, and put it on this massive jungle gym set. Wild jungle gym. Uh, a lot of fun though. Yeah. Really lots of injuries, lots of fun. It's good times. Injuries. I always love injuries. You went to the hospital? I was climbing this, this ladder and I pulled myself up on this uh, over this uh, rail and I basically jacked the top of my head on, on a truss. And it was kind of rough. Kind of rough. But you know, hardcore. Pretty hardcore. Hardcore. What do you think like the biggest difficulty was from going to a show to the same show but different? Um, yeah, the roles have changed a little bit. I'm in the ensemble, I play Mr. Gray and the man. Um, but I also sing the Christmas bells part in the beginning, all the little interludes there, which was it's basically combined two roles together, and they did that in a few different places. So I was just learning that, and the traffic was completely different, the choreography was different, but it was a pretty good transition. Is it difficult to like get the new version in your mind when you spent so much time on the tour? You know, it's funny, like I'm also uh, Roger on the study, so I was learning Roger a little while back and I'm rehearsing what you own and I'm singing all of the Mark parts because I'm on this box spinning around going crazy or whatever and I'm on top of this thing. And like I'm hanging on for dear life and I'm singing all the Mark parts because that's a Mark part. So the hardest part I think that was like making sure you're singing. Well, there's like chaos around it should be you. Yeah, it should be super easy, but for some reason, like when something goes crazy, I just like forget that and slip right back into that, which is kind of It's not bad. I'm learning. It's acting. It's live theater. It's Broadway magic. And uh, you were also telling us that you did the original workshops of American Idiot. Yeah, did those uh, here in the city, um, I guess in 2009. And then I had to a break from theater after that. Uh, a band called Downtown Crowd, and they set in New York here. We went on tour for a while. We do a lot of uh, a lot of the East Coast beaches and stuff like that in the South and the Midwest. Now I'm back in New York, loving it. And uh, we're gonna record again in April. In April, you moved back into the studio. That's really exciting. Super stoked, yeah. So, so for the, the people at home, like, what kind of music is your band? Um, basically, the love child of. Like Jason Mraz, Paul McCartney, Chuck Buckley, Marvin Gaye. It's kind of chill, kind of rock, fun, good, honest music. Which is the best. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, it's good. It's actually, it's groovy and it's chill. People would actually like it. I don't know if I want to call it baby making music, but it's kind of uh, <laughs> not quite that. But it's, uh, <laughs> but it's cool. It's, it's we're a pretty fun band. So. And um, how do you? take your musical experience in a rock band and translate it to Broadway? Um, I think at its core, 
art in general or music in general has a lot of the same principles. I mean, it, it's all about giving a good live performance. It's all about giving a good live performance. So I feel like as long as you keep those same principles together and you just work on your craft as an actor or you know as a musician, or whatever, it's kind of you work that and then you keep the same stage presence. And, yeah. Is it difficult to keep that rock presence active, like fresh every single night for the shows? Yeah, uh, no, yes and no. I mean, you try not to bring your day to the stage, but if you're having a weird day or something like that, it's a great beneficial thing because you can bring it there and you can really infuse it in your performance. And, um, it's almost cathartic as well sometimes. But if it gets in the way, like, it's distracting or something like that, then it's not good. But usually I can find good ways to, like, you know, take my energy or my mood. And, in there and just keep it fresh, keep it fresh, keep it honest. Is there something specific about rock musicals that you have to train your voice for and keep it going to be able to maintain that sound and that energy level? Um, yeah, water and sleep, I would say. Water and sleep, probably yeah, magic. There you go. Literally, water and sleep for your two best friends. That is. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much fun. And don't party too hard. Too hard, but you can still party. Rock star. Rockstar right here. So, are you you are on Twitter? Yep. What is your Twitter? Uh, the name of my, of my band is the Downtown Crowd. Aaron Lob, Aaron Lobinet, actually, in the Downtown Crowd. Downtown Crowd is my Twitter name. And uh, yeah, check it out. We're recording in April here in Brooklyn. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna have an awesome, fresh, hip sound. And okay. It's gonna be cool. Can't wait. And um, we'll put a link down below the video to uh, your iTunes, so people can go check that out, yeah, check to your Twitter, and yes. follow you, and see what's going on in April when you go back into the studio. Yes, and I'll be here, meanwhile, in the road stages. Doing the rent. Living in 525,000. Uh, cups of coffee. Cups of coffee. Dirty yes. diapers, perhaps. We actually have Robbie Spider got you a gift today. Ah! <laughs> I love you, guys. It's the best. He got you meatless balls. Oh, Look at that. You don't hear they taste the same if you close your eyes? Wow. Yes. They're very good with wine and beer. Yes. Thank you, James. I'm going to share this with the cast, and they're going to give you a lovely shout out. Some Probably good spotted rocks. Thank Some you. good meatless balls. Oh, well, thank you. It's very very spotted. It's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much for meeting with us yes, today. Of course, anytime, and I will definitely follow up. James the Intern. So Aaron was really, really nice, and he gave us five signed CDs from his band to give away. Super easy. If you want to enter the competition, all you have to do is tweet to him and Broadway Spotted and tell us that you watched the interview. And from those tweets, we'll select at random, and you could get a signed CD. Woohoo! CDs for free!